delivering on a, a, a blow away economy. Yeah, I mean, you saw the jobs report last Friday was really one of the best jobs report I've ever seen in my whole career as an economist. And, and you know, one of the things that you've talked about and really about this president, and it really it's something that's remarkable, is that we've now made 500,000 manufacturing jobs, right? You can remember a few years ago that it used to be if you watched the Lou Dobbs show, we were talking about how we had lost hundreds of thousands of manufacturing jobs and that the other administration was talking about how manufacturing was like agriculture in the last right. century and it was just going to disappear. Here, but we've made 500,000 jobs, manufacturing jobs, and, and you know millions and millions of jobs since President Trump was elected. I think it's like five million is the number, right? And, so, and, yeah. and this president, Kevin, as you know, I, he started talking about bringing jobs back when we would heard we had heard president after president, uh, Democrat and Republican, uh, talking about what a wonderful, brilliant thing labor arbitrage was, outsourcing and offshoring, just a brilliant uh, concept, uh, mm -hmm. and. And suddenly people are remembering you have to preserve this economy. You have to protect your workers and uh, middle class is the foundation of the country. Uh, and, yeah. and, and Lord Almighty, we have a president who <laughs> believes in the country and Americans. It, it's, uh, it's such a different world. And, and, and it's having a big payback for Americans. And you know, when you talk about jobs and GDP, it can all get kind of confusing. But I made a presentation last Friday in Atlanta at the American Economic Association meetings, where we showed people that the extra surprise, you know, relative to the previous forecast GDP that President Trump has delivered has added $3,100 mm -hmm. per household to gross domestic right. income, $3,100. It's already that big. And so, and so I think it's having a really big impact on people's lives. And one of the places we saw that is in, in the Christmas sales. You know, right. I, I think that there are, there are a lot more presents under the tree this year, and that's really good news for yeah, America. And good for you, because uh, so often uh, brilliant economists uh, stay in numbers and don't bring it to the level uh, you know, that uh, most of us live at, which is how much, what does it mean to me? And uh, in doing so, uh, you, you do the country a great service. I, I, I want to talk you. about this, uh, this uh, shutdown as well. Uh, I'm looking at a number of, uh, a range of numbers about what it's costing and uh, what the impact will be on GDP, et cetera. I, I don't see any studies on well, what does it cost uh, to continue to uh, allow uh, 50 billion dollars in remittances to leave the economy. What does it cost for the corruption that is on both sides of the border with Mexico? The, the massive corruption and violence that uh, exists in that corridor and particularly in Mexico. Our neighbors, friends and allies in Mexico are paying a tremendous price because we don't have a controlled border. Uh, what your thoughts about that and the importance right. of weighing these costs uh, to the economy? Right. Well, well, first I think about the, the economics of the border. Mm -hmm. You know, one way to think about it is that the CEA, we put out an estimate that uh, opioids cost us about $500 billion in costs because of the opioid epidemic in, in this country. In 2016, I think, was our last year we had an estimate. And 70,000 lives. Yes, that's right. And a huge share of those are coming across the Mexican border. And if we could even make a, a tiny dent on $500 billion, then you could definitely, uh, you know, go a long way towards paying for increased border security. But but the other thing I want to just say about the cost is that uh, if you think about uh, what's really happening, so what's happening is that there are all these government workers who are furloughed, uh, and what's going to happen is eventually we'll get the government back up and running, and when we do, they'll get their back pay. And so the taxpayers aren't going to pay less money to government workers because yeah. of the shutdown. They're, what's happening is their government workers are not showing up for work, and then they're going to get their back pay. And so for sure we're going to see in the economic statistics some impact of them not going to work, but it's, you know, in the end, the real economic uh, substance is a lot smaller than it's going to look like in the numbers if this were to drag on. I think the folks in your racket call that uh, equilibrium. Uh, and also, folks in your racket talk about uh, utility. And what we're watching with illegal immigration in this country is costing us immensely uh, in terms of public money, uh, and the taxpayers' sure. money. Uh, which is going to private benefit, that is, those who hire illegal immigrants uh, who do not, uh, in, uh, in nearly every instance, pay for education, do not pay for uh, Medicare, do not pay for the, uh, the social services that uh, illegal immigrants use. Uh, the benefit goes directly to those customers. We have to control immigration, do we not?
Right. You're, you're right that we do. And that's why the president has really drawn a line in the sand here right now. And, and the one other little bit of economics in this that I'd like to point out is that suppose that you uh, believed that border security was going to improve dramatically, say, two months from now, mm -hmm. and you were someone who wanted to get into the country illegally, what would you do? You'd run to the border right now. Right. And so I think that this uncertainty really is adding to the turmoil at the border, and that's really simple economics. Yes, simple economics, but uh, beyond the intellectual reach, apparently, of the radical Dems and their leaders uh, uh, on